when should I start my own personal injury law firm? I get this question all of the time, which is great because in today's world with today's technology, it's never been easier to go solo. But technology aside, going solo can also be super scary when you think about the financial implications. And it truly takes a special breed of a person to bet on themselves. I also like to live dangerously. So with this video, I'm here to help out your thought process before you decide to jump into the deep end of the pool. To do that, we're gonna talk about three considerations and factors that need to go into your equation. That way you're better prepared and you're feeling a little bit more confident in your decision to either go solo or postpone it for a later time. Welcome to Law Venture, a channel devoted to lawyers and future lawyers. My name's Jarrett Stone. I'm the owner of Stone Firm PLLC, a PI practice, but more importantly, I am your guide today in basically trying to answer a very important question. In fact, I'd go so far to say that this is a life-changing question. Is now the time for you to go solo? Let's maybe throw in another question. If not, when is the right time? Just so you get to know me a little bit better, whenever I graduated law school, the question I had was not if I'm gonna go solo and start my own personal injury law firm, but when. And as a result of having that type of mentality, I wanna say every three months or so, up until going solo, I kept asking myself, is now the time? Is now the time? Is now the time? And every time, I kept saying, no, no, not quite. Ooh, maybe, yeah, probably not until eventually that answer turned into a resounding yes. Frankly, I wanna to get to the point where you're saying, yes, now is the time to go solo, but you're saying it with confidence. You're not being timid about it. You're not saying, maybe maybe I should go solo, or maybe now is a good time. No, instead you're saying, yeah, this right here, this is my moment, this is my time to shine. Okay, so let's go through the three factors you need to consider before going solo. Factor number one, how strong is your referral network? For those familiar with my story, you know that before I went solo, I was working for a small personal injury law firm. There are only two lawyers, the owner and myself. And at some point before going solo, I realized that my referral network were bringing in more cases to this law firm than any other sources of referrals that the law firm already had. I remember at some point it hit me, the light bulb went off. I had that aha moment to where I realized, okay, now if I simply directed my referral sources to where instead of giving these cases to the law firm I was working at, if I basically took these cases under my own law firm, and I could have enough cases coming in to pay what needed to be paid in order to keep my cost of living at what it already was, plus the upside of having my own business and ultimately having a business that has continued to grow each and every year. So it's this concept of having an existing referral network before going solo that made me realize that I could start making money as quickly as possible. And now I'll pose the question to you. How many cases have you brought into your existing law firm in the last month, in the last two months? Do you have regular cases flowing in? Do you even have a referral network? If you feel like you're weak with this particular factor, not all hope is lost, but this is something that we're gonna back burner as a potential assignment moving forward. Quick time out from the video because I have to make a big announcement. I've seen the comments, I've seen the messages, I've seen the emails, and I am here to answer what I keep seeing over and over again. The PI playbook, as of the date of this recording, is officially open for enrollment. If you don't know what the PI playbook is, it's short for Personal Injury Playbook. This is my online course, but more importantly, my baby, because I've been putting so much time and energy into this course, to show you how I built my law firm, my PI practice, on a shoestring budget, all based on word of mouth referrals. 
If you're interested in learning about the PI Playbook, again, link is gonna slide above or it already did, and I'll put the link down in the description below. Factor number two, how much money have you saved? If you know prior to going solo that you're not bringing in any cases on your own from your own referral network, and you are motivated to go solo, then that means what you need to do is make sure you have enough money in the bank to act as a cushion to pay for those growing pains as you establish that referral network. I don't wanna sugarcoat this, let's get real here. It takes quite some time for a PI case to pay out. This means that if you're going solo without a referral network, you're gonna need to devote a lot of the beginning stages of going solo, maybe the first 60 to 90 days of building out that network, of connecting with people, having strong relationships to where people are feeling comfortable, like providers, sending you these cases, hopefully by month number four. But if we, let's just say on average, have cases that settle every six months, you're going about 10 months without seeing any attorney's fees coming in. That's a very long time. And God forbid, things take longer than expected. So in this situation of going solo without having any type of network, you're gonna have to figure out what your risk tolerance is and save the money accordingly to give you a comfortable cushion. And of course, I guess you could take a loan out if you really wanted to fast track all of this instead of saving, but I recommend instead of taking a loan, whenever you are trying to save and somebody else is paying your salary because you're working for another law firm, then I would use that time and use their salary to help build your network. That's exactly what I did. I was working for another law firm and I was connecting with these providers and I was funneling all of these cases to that law firm. So it was a win-win in that situation. And then when the time came for me to go solo, it was a simple phone call of like, hey, look, here's my new number. This is how you can get in contact with, with me and I'll take care of you under my new law firm's name. But as always, whenever you are relying on your savings, just keep in mind that your savings are basically a fuse. And if you can't get everything up and running by the time the fuse hits the bomb, then <sighs> factor three, do you have the experience? Okay, everyone, let's check our egos at the door. And for those who have never been in my office, the door is that direction. And the reason why I say this is because I understand that there are people watching this that have been practicing law for, let's say five years, 10 years, more, but that's not the kind of experience that I'm talking about. I totally acknowledge the fact that some larger personal injury law firms don't give you the experience to where you're handling a PI case from beginning to end. I mean, from the point of taking that phone call from a potential client, converting them into a client, all the way to resolution. In between, whether it's pre-lit litigation, you're dealing with liens, you're dealing with insurance, all of that, if you can handle the entire spectrum, I consider that as having the necessary experience. I also acknowledge the fact that these big law firms oftentimes will limit the associate's scope of work and thereby limit their experience to particular stages within the life of a PI case. For example, some lawyers, they're just intake lawyers to where they only handle the intake. Intake's very important. It's all about signing up good cases and not taking bad cases and developing a connection and converting them. But there's also more to a PI case than just intake. There are lawyers out there who haven't dealt with beginning to end. That's not a deal breaker if that's the case. That's not a deal breaker by any means, but that's what makes this third factor I would consider an X factor because you can always learn what you need to do from beginning to end. You can always fill in the gaps with either having to take an online course, CLE, or having a mentor who can help teach you and coach you on what to do. And then hopefully you can pick it up pretty quickly. But what's going to happen and what you need to acknowledge is that if there are gaps that need to be filled, whenever it comes to learning to fill those gaps, it's gonna take time. And if you're maybe weak with factor one and not super strong with factor two, then that's gonna take time away from probably what's most important, which is building your referral network whenever you're solo. 
You don't want to spend too much time doing research and then neglect the cases actually needing to come in. All right, so let's bring it all together by talking about a few scenarios. And the first one's obvious. If you're strong with factor one to where you have a strong referral network, plus you have a good amount of money in the bank to where you're strong with factor two, and you also have valuable, valuable experience to where you know how to handle every step of a PI case, and I think you're ready to go solo, which is exciting. I hope you're excited. And if that is you, let me know in the comment section down below. I can't wait to root for you. Now let's pivot a little bit and work with our sliding scales here. Let's say you're strong with your referral network, but you don't have a lot of money in the bank with factor number two, but at the same time, maybe you're middle ground with factor number three with your experience. I think if you have a strong referral network that's bringing cases each and every month, or maybe as often as every other week, then you're gonna be you're gonna be all right. You're gonna be in a good position. Okay, we've already talked about this next scenario. You're lacking in factor one. You don't really have an established referral network. But let's say you do have money in the bank that will last a comfortable amount of time. Plus, you have the experience then that's again going to be up to your risk tolerance. But if it's me, I'm going to say that that's enough of a risk for me to be able to shoot my shot. And I think I could probably figure out the rest when it comes to building the network that I need to build if factors two and three are checked off. The final one that is probably going to be the no scenario in most people's situations is if you're weak with factor one and you're weak with factor two. I think factor three in that scenario becomes irrelevant because if you don't have the cases coming in and you don't have the money saved, then it doesn't really matter how much experience you have. And so in that situation, if you find yourself saying, no, I'm not ready, then guess what? This should hopefully give you a goal in order to motivate you to achieve that goal. What I mean by that is if you find your week with factor one, then maybe now is the time to start networking with providers, to start networking with referral sources, or to really start hitting home runs for the clients you are representing at the law firm you're currently working at. Same alternative approach a little bit with factor number two. If you feel like you don't have the time or the energy to start networking, then maybe now is the time to start saving the money in order to have that comfortable cushion to ultimately, whenever you do go solo, start focusing on factor number one after going solo. So boil down, the sooner you start working on these weaknesses and you start turning them into strengths, the sooner you can go solo. And the sooner you go solo, the sooner your life can potentially change. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. And with all that said, I'll see you in the next video.